Hi everybody, let's do another kinematics question here. Now in this question, Sibi has gotten out of her car in a grocery store parking lot, which is tilted three degrees. Now 50 meters down the hill from Sebi, there is an old lady that lets go of her car. There is no friction in this question. Now once the cart is let go, Sebi immediately starts accelerating at two meters per second square. We want to find out how far the cart has rolled before Sebi catches it. <laughs> So first of all, we're going to draw a quick picture here. So let's say if Seppi is standing right here, and I'm on a hill, and this hill is 3 degrees. Very good. Now, there's an old lady 50 meters down from me. So if I'm right here at this point, the cart that is going to be let go is going to be here. And the distance, I'm going to mark it to be 50 meters. Very good. Now, what's going to happen is that I'm going to start accelerating and the card is going to be let go. And at some point in the future, we're going to meet. So let's say if this point is where I catch the card, I'm going to call this point D1, which is the distance that Sepi travels. I'm going to call this part D2, which is the distance that the card travels. And from this point to this point is already 50 meters, so we already know that. So from this point to this point is 50. Therefore, what is the relationship between all these three distances? I can write D1 as 50 plus D2. All right, very good. I'm going to write my given separately for Sepi and for the card. So over here, Sepi has an initial velocity of zero meters per second and then it's going to start accelerating at two meters per second squared and for the cart the initial velocity again is zero meters per second and I don't know what my acceleration is now in this question what I'm actually solving for is d1 which is what I want to find out and it looks like the only way I can find out what D1 is, is to find out what D2 is first, and then plug it in into in this equation and solve for D1. Now, in order to find D2, so the distance that the cart has traveled from this point to this point, is I need that some information. I know the initial velocity is zero, but I don't know what the acceleration is. Let me do a reminder here for you. Let's say if I have an object that's gonna free fall, the only acceleration that's causing this to fall is acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, let's say if I have the same object on a hill, and I'm not applying any force to it, the only acceleration that this ball is going to have is a fraction of the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is always pointing down, so if this is g, then a fraction of that, basically a vector component in the direction of the motion, is causing this ball to roll down, which is only this pink vector right here. Now, how do I find out what that is? Now, let's say if my heel is, for example, in this case, 3 degrees. Then by similar triangles, we know that whenever we have something like that, this angle is also going to be 3 degrees. Why is that again? I'm just going to quickly explain to you. It's because if this is 3 degrees and this is 90 degrees, then this is 180 minus 90 plus 3. So 180 is minus 93 equals... 180 minus 93 is 7, 10, 7, 0, 17, 8. So it's 87. So if that's 87 and this yellow part is 90, 
So the pink part over here is going to be 90 minus 87, which is 3 degrees. So this degree is also going to be 3. So going back to my question here, over here, if this is 3 degrees, if I were to do a picture for this part, if this is G, then over here it would be 3 degrees, and the component, which is this pink vector here, would just be G times sine of 3 degrees, which is 9.81 times sine of 3 degrees. If you put that into your calculator, you should get 0 0.51 meters per second squared. So this is basically the acceleration of the cart, right? So acceleration of cart here is 0 0.51 meters per second squared. There we go. Now we have one more piece of information. So knowing that it starts from initial velocity and the acceleration is 0 0.51 meters per second squared, what can I find here? Let's look at the equations that I can use, right? So once I have vi and a, what are, which one of these equations do you think we can pick in order to be able to solve for d2, which is what I'm looking for, right? So I have two equations that starts with delta d, and um, which is possibly what I'm going to use, but I don't have vf, therefore I'm going to pick this equation, which is d2 equals v1 delta t plus half of a delta t squared. T is still an, an unknown variable here, which I'm going to actually use the first part to calculate it. Now, what I know is that the same time that it takes for SEPI to get to the final point is the same time that it's going to take for the car to reach the final point. So my T for this part equals to the T for this part. Therefore, I'm solving for the same thing. So let's use the first part. So this is all using the second part of the data, so for the cart. Now for SEPI, I'm going to use the same equation. So D1 equals V1 delta T plus half of A delta T squared, um, only because I have the same thing. So I have the initial V, I have the acceleration. So therefore, I'm going to use the same thing. I'm still going at my initial velocity is zero meters per second plus half of, what is my acceleration here? The question is giving me two meters per second squared. And then for delta t is still unknown, which is the same thing as the pink t over here, which is d1. Now I have two equations that are actually related to each other. So I'm just going to write these the equations that I have here so we have it clear. So these are the equations that I found. Now I can simplify the first one because 2 gets canceled by 2 here. So therefore I have d1 equals t squared. And for the second part, if I divide 0 0.51 by 2 over here, I will have divide by 2, I will have d2 equals 0 0.256, so I rounded to 0 0.26 t squared. Now I know that these two are related, so d1 is equal to 50 plus d2, and then I'm going to plug in the first equation and the second equation into the green one over here. What will I end up with is t squared equals 50 plus 0 0.26 t squared. Now I will just have to rearrange it, so I'm just going to put the like terms in one side. So I have t squared minus 0 0.26 t squared equals 50. I'm going to keep 50 on the other side. Now I have 1 t squared minus 0 0.26 t squared. If I actually subtract 0 0.26 from 1, I will end up with 0 0.74 t squared equals 50. And then the next thing I want to do is to divide both sides by 0 0.74. 
And then these two will cancel out, so I'm going to be left with t squared equals 50 divided by 0 0.74. On your calculator, it will give you 67.6. And then, in order to find t, you want to take the square root of both sides, so the square root of this and square root of that. You will end up with t, because this cancels with that. And the square root of 67.6 on your calculator should give you 8.2 seconds. Okay, so this is the time that it takes for me to actually catch the cart. Now, what I'm trying to find out is how far down the hill, because if the question is asking, how far has the cart rolled before Seppi catches it? So I need to find what D1 is. And going back to my equation right here, d1 is equal t squared, and t squared was 67.6 from here. So d1 is 67.6 meters. If you actually pay attention to the question, how far has the cart rolled before Seppi catches it? So I want to find out what d2 is. Now in order to find d2, I'm going to plug it back into this. Or I could either plug it back into this. So D2 is just D1 minus 50, which is 67.6, which is my D1 here, minus 50. And that will give me 17.3 meters. So this distance is actually what the question is finally asking for. So the distance that the cart has traveled before Seppi catches it. There you go. If you have any questions, please comment them down below. Please like this video and subscribe. Thank you so much.